To understand the following observations, you should keep in mind that so far we have only presented the oldest known version of the Mukattam narrative. This version is found in the oldest manuscripts of the history of the patriarchs of Alexandria. But, if you have a careful look at some of the later manuscripts of the same text, we can find some subtle stylistic changes which do reveal a certain amount of interpretation by the scribes. Let's just give one example. You will probably remember that the narrative presented in Unit 2 was rather vague about the reason why the saint, the tanner, had lost one of his eyes. It simply states that he had plugged it out because it had beheld what was not mine. But several manuscripts contain an addition here which was clearly inspired by the Bible verse that we quote, quoted there this addition is that he had, plugged it, he had plugged out his eye because he had looked at what was not mine with a look of lust. Now, some of these manuscripts were used for several printed editions of the history of the patriarchs of Alexandria, one of which you can see here. And obviously, these printed editions are available to anyone. If you do not read Arabic, that is not a problem because some of them have English translation added. So, that's great. But many of the manuscripts we know today have not been used in those editions. And that's not so great. And this is why our ICAP team is now in the process of preparing new critical editions based on all the research mentioned before. And this research includes those manuscripts that only contain specific parts of the text, such as precisely the life of Patriarch Abraham with the Mukatta miracle account. The point is that an independent life or biography of this Patriarch exists outside the canonical version and the history of the Patriarchs of Alexandria. And in this independent life, you can see that the story has been further expanded and that several details in the story differ substantially from the original version and the history of the Patriarchs of Alexandria. In the first place, in this independent version, the half-blind saint finally has a name, Saman. Yes, the, na the same name as the modern father Saman. This is certainly not by chance, as we will see shortly. Furthermore, he is no longer a tanner, but a former cobbler. Before the patriarch met him, he used to earn his livelihood making and repairing shoes. One day, a female client entered his workshop to have her shoe repaired. And she uncovered her leg and it was exceedingly beautiful. And this aforementioned man looked at the aforementioned woman's leg and his eye deceived him. And he looked at it with the eye of lust. And at that very moment he remembered the word of the Gospel. Now you will certainly remember the modern film version we showed you some fragments from earlier. Most of the time, this film follows the canonical version of the history of the Patriarchs of Alexandria. But it does use the name Saman. And in this particular case, it seems to be at least a little bit influenced by this independent version. But unlike the film, this independent version goes much further. By picturing the cobbler's, cobbler's client as a very sinful woman, another difference occurs in some of the manuscripts of the independent version and concerns the prayer of the patriarch Abraham that made the mountain move. In this version, the Caliph and Moaz, at the patriarch's request, tells the Muslims and the Jews to pray before the Christians and, to be sure, the mountain only responds to the third Christian prayer. And yet another significant difference concerns the actual movement of the mountain itself. In the history of the patriarchs of Alexandria, the mountain is lifted or rather moved up and down three times. In the independent version, the mountain is moved from pl one place to another piece by piece 
and thus gives the caliph some new space to build the new city of Cairo. Furthermore, this later version inserts, after the miracle itself, a very long dialogue about religion between the caliph al-Mu'izz and the patriarch Afraham. At the end of this conversation, in this later version, the story ends in a sensational conclusion. Al-Mu'izz, the Fatimid Imam Caliph, actually says to the patriarch, Baptize me with your pure and blessed hands on this very night. At the end, in some of the manuscripts, it stated rather concisely that Al-Mu'izz just disappeared mysteriously and that nobody ever found out where he had gone. But at a later stage, and we don't know when exactly, a scribe, while copying this story from an earlier manuscript, must have felt the need to give a further explanation of this sudden disappearance. That must be why, in several manuscripts, we find an additional sentence that claims that the caliph left to go to a monastery where he was baptized and even became a monk. At this point, it's important to stress that some of the manuscripts containing this independent version of the biography of Patriarch Afraham in Arabic are written not in the Arabic alphabet itself, but in the Syriac alphabet. This special writing system is called Karshuni. Manhel Mahul is our specialist in this field. His PhD research is all about Karshuni and deals with a number of texts written in it. One part of this project concerns these Kashuni manuscripts of the life of Patriarch Afraham. The term Kashuni is used for Arabic written in the Syriac script, but it's sometimes also used for Kurdish or Persian or other languages written in the Syriac script. And by the way, this phenomenon of writing a language in the script of another language exists in many other combinations. Turkish written in the Greek alphabet, Arabic written in Hebrew script, medieval Spanish written in Hebrew, but also in Arabic letters, and so on. This may be called allography, although other terms have been suggested as well. And it is here, at the Institut Orientaliste de Louvain, that the first comparative study of such allographic traditions has recently been edited. edited.